Okay, so we're up to lesson seven, which is all about listening. So we often think about influence as being what we say or how we say it. But perhaps a neglected area that we fail to think about is listening. I don't know if you knew, but there's three types of listening. There's peripheral listening. There's attentive listening. And there's active listening. So we're going to explore what these three different types of listening are all about. And we're going to start with peripheral listening. So peripheral listening is that sort of listening where it's kind of just noise in the background. Hey, you might catch the odd word, but you'd struggle to remember anything of any detail. It's really annoying for the person that's doing the speaking. And do you know what? It's not influential. Now, I'm sure you're sitting there thinking, oh, I, I don't do that, but I know somebody who does. Well, I think you probably do do peripheral listening from time to time. I think we all do. I know I do. I get told sometimes by my wife that there's a point that she sees. I just kind of switch off when, I, when I've heard enough. And it's not anything to be proud of. And of course, as soon as I do that, I stop influencing. So peripheral listening is something to avoid. It's not influential. We don't get to know what's going on. We find out that we've been told something, but we didn't remember being told because we switched off. And perhaps most importantly, it has quite a negative effect on the person that's talking to us, because what does it really say to them? It says to them that what you're doing is more important than what they're telling you, that they're not really very important, that you're more important than them, perhaps, or that you've got stuff that actually takes precedence. A typical example is, you know, we're at the computer. Yeah, I am listening. Carry on. Carry on. How can we do that? How can we listen whilst typing an email or whilst working on a document? But we do it all the time, or at least we see it happening all the time. So if you're one of those people that says things like that, yeah, I am listening. Uh, my recommendation to you would be to stop doing that. Take time to be attentive, which is the next type of listening we're going to look at. Attentive listeners adopt good eye contact. Now, we've already discussed some of the intricacies around eye contact. So we make initial eye to eye contact, but then we don't stay there too long because that can be a bit intimidating or creepy. But we initially make eye contact and then we operate around here when we're listening. So we just we just look at the person and we are listening to what they're saying. We adopt good body language if we're being attentive. So again, all the stuff around positive body language that we looked at applies here. So some little tricks we can do if we really want to show that we're listening, we might tilt our head to one side. Now, obviously, we don't want to make that look ridiculous, but that's a natural thing to do when we are listening to somebody. So we might tilt our head on one side, we might lean forward a little bit, and we might nod to show understanding. We might even make little noises, like, I understand, or, hmm, okay, interesting. So those little brief comments just help the person to feel confident and comfortable in talking to us, and they show that we are listening. Now, attentive listening sounds great and, and it is obviously a lot better than the other type of listening, peripheral listening. But active listening takes it a step further. But the problem with attentive listening is we could, in theory, do all that good stuff like nodding our heads, hmm, interesting, doing all that stuff whilst thinking about what we're going to have for our meal tonight. So it's possible to fake interest or attention, but active listening goes a step further. So it includes all the attentive stuff, plus you do things like ask questions. Okay, that's interesting. So 
what happened with that then and how did you deal with it? That sort of question. You dig a bit deeper. Well, tell me more about what happened there. How often does that happen? When you did, how did you feel about it? How did you overcome it? So you really start to dig deeper. You get involved with the story. Unfortunately, a lot of us tend to take the time when we're not talking to think about what we're going to say next. So in a conversation, we might be, yeah, okay, that's interesting. But in our head, we're going, yeah, yeah, I wish I shut up now because I've got something I want to say. Or that reminds me of a really good anecdote. That I'm going to tell them next. Oh, oh, yeah, let me speak, let me speak. The problem is, while we're doing that, we're not really listening to what the person is saying. We're missing a lot. So really listening means giving ourselves time to think about what they're saying, to come up with some intelligent questions, to dig deeper, to really get to know the point that they're making and perhaps identify some deeper things that they're perhaps not even saying that you might be able to deduce from what they're saying and what they're not saying. All of that stuff you need to give proper attention to. You can't just be thinking about what your next statement's going to be. So active listening means getting involved in what they're talking to you about. And this is something that you can practice. So I recommend that you practice this. And you can practice it perhaps when you're, you meet somebody, perhaps for the first time, and really start asking questions when they're telling you about themselves. That's interesting. How long have you done that job then? Okay, what are the big challenges then in doing that job? What are the good days? What are the not so good days? You really start to show interest. It's a great way to make friends too, because actually when we meet somebody that we really get on with, you might well think about it afterwards that the reason you really enjoyed talking to them was because they showed interest. So showing interest is part of being an active listener. Now there are exceptions to that, and I would say there are times when if our, uh, perhaps our direct reports, our team member, maybe a colleague, they really have something to talk about that's perhaps difficult for them to, to express into words. Sometimes not interrupting constantly with more and more questions might be the best thing. So at that point, it's a good idea just to shut up and listen to what they've got to say. So there are times when attentive listening is best. But in general, active listening is where you're going to be able to influence. 